tuned in to my Blood, Sweat, and Heels recap. Be sure to subscribe if you have not yet done so. Also, be sure to share this video wherever you like to share videos. Give it that good old thumbs up. And also, head over to my other channel, which is Some More Love TV without the real. And you'll be able to see different makeup looks that I've created, as well as my Love and Hip Hop Atlanta reunion, I mean, not reunion, <laughs> recaps will be over there. So check that out. Okay, guys? So now let's go ahead and get into this recap. We start off with Micah is going to meet up with Demetria, and she's going with the best intentions in mind. She wants things to get back to kind of like the way they used to be when they first all met up and before the craziness, before she was calling her a drunkard and all those types of things. So that's what she's hoping. And she's traveling all the way from her place in Harlem, going to see her out in in um what what's in Brooklyn. So she was like, let me get my fifty dollars ready for this cab. And to be honest, like I don't know if it would be fifty dollars. I guess it depends on the location. Like if maybe she's like at the end of Brooklyn, it might be about fifty dollars, but it probably would be like thirty. Because I know from Manhattan to like the Bronx where I am, it's probably like that much. But going from the Bronx Unless she's in the upper side of, of Harlem, which it kind of does seem like she is from the way her house looks, then it could be maybe $40, $50 or close to it. Crazy. I thought she drives, but she drove. But I guess it was, um, she doesn't drive. I think it's actually her boyfriend at the time that I used to call the partner. I think he was the one that used to drive. Terry. That's his name, right? Terry. So anyways, um, they do meet up, and they seem like they're at a much better place now. Uh, Demetria, she's like, wow, this seems like somebody that's totally different. She's so relaxed and calm. She says that she really likes this Micah. But to me, I just feel like Demetria, she's probably feeling better because everything with the wedding and stuff like that. But I just still feel like she's very judgmental. Uh, it's just like in her nature. I feel like if... If Micah was to be the real Micah, you know, the outgoing, fun person that her family loves, that her friends love, and her real friends, you know, they kind of did just love that, gravitate towards that. If she's like the life of the party, if she's that way around Demetria, Demetria's first thing is she's drunk, or she's, she's too much, she's acting crazy. But that's her personality, and I don't know, I just feel like if you can't accept somebody for who they really are, then you should probably you're not a real true friend, you know? Anyways, um, Arzo and Melissa, they're looking at some clothes, and then they talk about her family, about Arzo's family, and Arzo, she says that she hasn't allowed them to meet yesterday, which is her boyfriend and dad, because they really want somebody who's going to be a provider for her, and somebody Muslim, maybe Afghanistan, perhaps, and he's neither of those things. Right now, he's a starving artist, so he's not really doing well in life and even she even said that for them to get married she would want him to to have his career on a topic and I mean that's probably why she got him on the show with her so he can get his music out there his career out there I mean we have yet to hear a little bit of his music maybe they should play a little bit of the music that's I mean it would be a good idea maybe they should be invited to an expo but then again he's not a major factor in this show but yeah she wants him to to get better as far as his career get it on and popping before they can even think about marriage because she claims that that's just playing house if they were to before that I mean I have a different outlook on that I feel that okay I understand she wants to wait until he gets to but if you're gonna be with him you want you should be want to be with him regardless Unless you're looking for a certain type of wedding, that's a different story. If you want a glamorous wedding, so you want to wait, okay, until he gets his career popping. But if you want to be with him, you might as well be with him from the beginning if you know that he's the one. That's just my whole take on it. And also, um, there was something else that she has said that kind of was like, uh, I don't know. Oh, the whole thing where she was saying about the playing house. I necessarily feel like playing house is totally different. I feel like playing house is when you're not married to the person at all and you're just there with them and they're not making any moves. They don't seem like they want to marry you at all and you're just living together 
or shacking up. I feel like that's more, I mean, and no shade to nobody, everybody's entitled to what they want to do, because some people don't even want to ever get married, so that's on them, but just for me personally, I feel that that's more so playing house. Even if you have children, and you're just like mom, dad, and you're in the house, you're shacked up, you got no papers involved, no legalities connecting you together, I feel like that's more so could be, that more so could be considered to be playing house than what she's talking about if you're married and he just doesn't have his career popping. No, that just means that you're married and he doesn't have his career popping. Chantel and Arzo, they recently reached out to Daisy. Chantel, we all, well, she came to actually visit her and just be a support system for her because, you know, Micah, she's dealing with her own things right now. Micah's grandmother, she's not doing too well. She has, I believe, congestive heart failure, and some other issues. But before we get into Micah and her grandmother, with Chantel and Arzo, Arzo, she kind of reached out to her when they were at the luncheon and just kind of showed a little bit of sympathy, empathy, and all that other stuff for her and just let her know how she felt about the situation. But Demetria, I mean, Daisy is just like, wow, like Demetria and Geneva, she's known them for so long because we all know she even if she hasn't known them forever, she's known them since the last season. These people are brand new. So she just recently started meet, knowing them. And they're reaching out to her and being a support system. They didn't even say anything about anything. Like, they didn't say, I'm sorry to hear that. They didn't say, how are you feeling? They didn't ask her anything. And that, I do feel what she was saying. That's messed up. Even if she wasn't the one to tell, to, that told them, she knows that she gave Melissa the go-ahead to say it. She gave Melissa and Micah the go-ahead to say it. Arzo let her know that she heard, and they didn't say anything. It's, you know, I, it, it was kind of weird and messed up. So now back to Micah. Micah, her grandmother, is not doing too well. She may be, from what Micah was saying, you know, it may be her last days because a lot of the things that the doctors told her mother about her granny are similar to those things that she found out about her dad before he died last season. So, you know, it's kind of all messed up for her because that was somebody that she was really close with. She kind of feels like she's living out her granny's dreams and things that she always wanted to do, but at the time, she wasn't able to do it because of the era. There was a lot of prejudice and other things that kind of stopped her from being able to do the things that she wanted to do in life. She wanted, she was always entertaining. And even when they showed her, like, at the little house and everybody was there, Granny was moving. I was like, yes! You know, she's 91 years old. She has all these health problems. But she showed that she she's not going to let that keep her down. She's going to keep on moving and shaking. And I feel like Micah is the perfect person to, like, just get people back up into a good spirit. I feel like she's good with, like, well, I mean, I don't know if she's good with all older people, but she's good with her granny. And she just seems like she'll be a good mother one day. Like, really, like, one of those mothers that's just, the kids are able to tell their mother everything and just always, like, you know, on the go with them, wanting to do things, participate in everything. She just seems like that type. And I feel like every time she was around her granny, her granny just seemed like to pick up so much life and just seemed like she was just so happy and full of energy. And it, it was beautiful to watch just like the transformation because she just gets her out of the rut and just gets her able to look at like things like swans and water and nature and get her dancing, you know? She was like, oh, hello, Bhakti and stuff. I was like, yes, go ahead, granny. But, um, yeah, that was pretty much the episode. It wasn't much other things that happened um, besides that. We'll see what happens in the next one. It looks like it might get a little bit better. This one was just kind of like, it seemed almost like a filler because it didn't really have any crazy. I mean, it was an episode nonetheless. I mean, just because it's not crazy doesn't mean it's just a filler. It, it just wasn't really anything too crazy or exciting to talk about. But that's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to stay fabulous.